Hello, welcome to another module of this course, Analog Circuits. So, in the previous module, we covered the topic of filters, where we learned the general properties of the transfer function of a filter, what are the various types of filter, and uh, how the location of the poles and zeros affect the magnitude response of the filter. However, we have not covered anything about the design of the filter. We have, isn't it? We just saw the if there is a low pass filter, then it should have a response like this. The pass band should have a maximum attenuation and the stop band should have a minimum attenuation. But suppose you are given the opposite, that is you have been given a response or some specifications that in the stop band, this is the minimum attenuation that you must achieve in the stop band. This is the minimum attenuation that you must achieve in the pass band and these are the stop band and uh, pass band cutoff frequencies, then how do you do the process? That is, how do you go from the specification to an actual transfer function? So, let us see how we can do it. Now, before going into the mathematics, first of all, the way to approach this problem is that there are some prototype functions present. Now, prototype functions are not an actual filter implementation, they are just a polynomial representing how the filter response should be. Now, from this prototype, we try to fit or rather we sh I should say I try to we take a basic prototype polynomial and try to modify it, so that it fits our specification. And then once we obtain the modified polynomial, we, we use some rules or some properties of the polynomial to obtain the transfer function. So, first we will see have a prototype function from which, which we will modify to match the magnitude response required and then from the magnitude response, we shall obtain the transfer function. So, one such prototype is what we call a Butterworth prototype. As I said, a prototype is just a polynomial with a specific frequency response. So, the magnitude response for this prototype is given like this. Note that here this prototype, the actual response depends on this epsilon and n, capital N, and therefore, this is not fixed. So, depending on what value we choose for this epsilon and this capital N, our response will be modified. Now, given some specifications of A max and the cutoff frequency, the problem here is really to find out what combination of epsilon and capital N will satisfy our desired response. So, for example, this function at omega equal to omega p, this simply becomes equal to ok. So, this is by the way the value of the a max ok at omega p and in terms of decibels, I can write the value of a max as Now, attenuation A is the inverse of the gain given by magnitude of T 
and therefore, in decibels attenuation will come out to this value from which we can write epsilon is equal to 10 raise to a max over 10 minus 1. Okay. So, from here, so depending on the value of a max, I can get the value of epsilon. Okay. How to find out the value of capital N? So, to find out the value of capital N, we note that at omega equal to omega s, the attenuation becomes which in turn is equal to this attenuation in the stop band a of omega s should be at least a min should should be greater or equal to a min now in the worst case that is when the attenuation is just minimum okay it should be preferably more than a min but suppose we just make it a min then that value can be used to find out the value of n. Okay. So, then from this equation by substituting this equal to a min in place of a of omega s, if I substitute as a min, I can find out the value of capital N can be found. So, then I started with a prototype function. I have found out the values of epsilon and capital N from the values of A max in the pass band and A min in the stop band like this. So, now I need to find out the actual transfer function note that this t of j omega that I have got is the magnitude response. I have not got the actual transfer function. So, the way to find out this actual transfer function is like this. So, the actual transfer function that you will get will be something like this. where this omega 0 is given by okay. and this k gain is the gain at omega equal to 0. Now, the poles now, the question is I just wrote this transfer function, but I did not show how to get this p 1 p's. So, the p's will be obtained from this kind of geometrical construction. Suppose, this is the complex plane then the p's will be like this. the 
poles will lie on circle having radius equal to omega p times 1 upon epsilon n. So, basically this is equal to this radius is equal to omega 0. They will lie on this circle with an angle pi upon n separating each other and the first angle will be pi upon 2 n. Okay. So, let us see an example for say n equal to 2 what happens. So, for n equal to 2 again our poles will lie on a circle like this. So, my two poles will be separated by 90 degree. So, 90 is equal to pi upon 2 okay. and from the y axis the two poles will be separated by an angle of 45 degree which is equal to pi upon 2 times 2. Okay. Now, for n equal to 3 what happens? For n equal to 3 again, what happens is that we have three poles separated by 60 degree from each other. So, this one is separated from, so this is my p 1, this is p 2, this is p 3, p 1 is separated from p 2 by 60 degree, p 2 is separated from p 3 by 60 degree and the radius of this circle is given by this value. Similarly, for n equal to 4, We have four poles So, this is how we do the design for a Butterworth filter and the poles, these poles. So, for example, for uh, n equal to 4, the transfer function that we will be getting will be something like this.
okay. And the P 1, P 2, P 3, P 4 values will be taken from this, these values of P 1 from on the complex plane. K will be found out from the D C gain design and omega 0 as I have already said omega stated before will be given by omega p times 1 by epsilon raised to 1 upon n. So, in this case n is 4 that is why this will be this. So, this is the complete design procedure for a Butterworth prototype. So, once again I will just repeat what we have done. We have started from a prototype function we use the prototype function modified it to suit our uh, attenuation specifications in the pass band and stop band. Then we found out the magnitude response for our specific case and then the, from the response that we got magnitude response that we got for our specific case we obtain the tr transfer function of the system. So, once again, so the here is where we started from, this is the prototype, okay. this is the prototype true for any Butterworth system. The unknowns are the epsilon value and capital N. So, this is the Butterworth prototype function, unknown epsilon and capital N. A max is the maximum allowed attenuation in the pass band. So, from this we write get using this formula, we get the value of A max like this and from this formula we can obtain the value of epsilon. So, from A max we obtain epsilon. Omega p is already known. Okay. Then we know the minimum attenuation that has to be present in the stop band. From A min we calculate the value of A min using this equation and then from this equation we can calculate the value of n. Now, note one thing that I forgot to say here is that this n should always is always an integer. So, if you are say getting a value of n as 1.346, then you should take the next higher integer as the value of n. So, this should be substituted with n equal to 2. If you get n equal to 2.346, instead of this you should take n equal to 3. So, from here we get what is the value of n and epsilon. So, we now have our Butterworth prototype function as applicable for our specific case ready. The transfer function that we will obtain will be of this form. There will be n poles and the values of these poles will be found out from this diagram. This diagram is a circle on the complex S plane. This is sigma, this is j omega, the y axis is j omega, x axis is sigma. The poles will lie in the left half of the S plane from stability criteria and they will be separated from each other by an angle given by pi upon n. The first and last poles will be separated from the y axis by an angle of pi upon 2 n. So, here are some examples then. For n equal to 2, there are two poles, one on the left half of the S plane. Now, one thing I should have mentioned at the beginning in the previous module is that for we know from stability criteria that the poles of uh, any stable system as we have seen should lie in the left half of the S plane. Therefore, for a filter also from stability point of view, the poles will lie on the left half of the S plane. And that is why when we are considering this prototype uh, or when we are developing the Butterworth transfer function, we will consider only poles which are on the left half of the S plane. For example, we could have considered our pole locations to be here also, but then they will lead to instability. Hence, they are, we will not consider such poles. Our poles will always be on the left half of the S plane. Now, for n equal to 2, the separation between the two poles P 1 and P 2 is 90 degree and the separation of P 1 from the j omega axis and the separation of P 2 from the j omega axis is 45 degree. For n equal to 3, we have three poles lying on the left half of the S plane along the 
circle whose radius is given by this value omega p up multiplied by 1 upon epsilon raised to 1 upon 3. Poles p 1 and p 2 are separated from each other by 60 degree, p 2 and p 3 by 60 degree and p 1 and p 3 are separated from j omega axis by 30 degree. And finally, for n equal to 4, our pole locations are similar except that they, the poles are separated from each other by 45 degree and from the j omega axis by 22.5 degree and also the radius of this circle is given by omega p times 1 upon epsilon raised to 1 upon 4. I hope that uh, clarifies the design procedure for the Butterworth filter. In the next module, we shall be looking at yet another prototype which is known as the Chebyshev uh, prototype and we shall see certain advantages that the Chebyshev prototype has over the Butterworth prototype and also certain disadvantages that the Chebyshev prototype has over the Butterworth prototype. So, that is what we will discuss in the next module. Thank you.